He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart. And we're here with my guest, with veteran character actor, uh, Spencer Garrett. And I got to say, um, we don't know each other. We just met the other day, though. We, I feel like I've... D- yeah. I feel Ditto. Like I've Ditto you, for me. I feel no, like we're... No, you're 100 years. Yeah. And ev- I had like four different guests, uh, Jack McGee and so many other people say, how come you don't have this guy on the show? I said, well, I don't know him. And almost everybody on the show is people I know or I work with. And to my dismay, I've never worked with you, which is so sad. You're like that just the, means it's about to happen. Uh, it's really? Happen. Oh, happen, sure. God. Yeah, it'll that happen, would be sure. so great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you are sort of the uh, straight version of me, but with more credits. <laughs> uh, where, where you've done recurring, I've got one. Uh, you got to start somewhere. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's only 40 years. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the Tonys. When the guy comes on stage who win, won for um, The Humans, which I saw in New York. Oh, I gotta, if anybody's not seen The Humans. Him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reed Bernie. I was and so he comes on stage him. and he says, he says, uh, this is so great. And he says, I've been in the business 42 years. The 35. Last, 30, last 35, 35 have been great. Really, really bad. But the last eight have been good. He was in one of my favorite movies that nobody's ever heard of called uh, Four Friends um, with Craig Wasson. And Josh oh, Lissa. I know that movie. You remember that movie? And Is Brad Davis in it? No, it's not it's Brad. Da- not Brad Davis. Someone like Bruce that. Davison. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yes, I love that um, movie. And you know, he the, the movie came out, and it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. If you've never seen it, go see it. And and I remember thinking at the time, wow, who is this guy? He's just terrific. And he was a young, you know, young, starting out actor, probably in his mid late twenties. And then, you know, he had, as, as happens with a lot of us, it, it sort of goes like this and then sort of tails off. And so I was just so thrilled for him to see Well, him. you're like with showbiz royalty. I mean, your mom is Kathleen Nolan, who when I was a kid, or I don't, know if, I don't think it was when I was a kid, it was when she was even on repeats. I used to watch her on The Real McCoys yeah, yeah. with Walter That's Brennan. Great. It's a little before your time. Yes, I mean, it is. I think yeah. I used to watch it in the afternoon sure. after school. Yeah, because that was like late 50s, early 60s. She left the show in order to... Have, have me. So. And she was also the president of the Screen Actors Guild. She was. First, first woman. First woman president of a labor union. Wow. In the world, I think. Yeah. And two term president of the Screen Actors Guild. So, yeah. M- I'm mighty proud of her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she, is she acting again? or is she, she is. She actually just, uh, she's had some sort of health issues the last couple of years. She's in her, she's up there. Yeah. Uh, she's had a hell of a good, long, wonderful life and hadn't worked for a couple of years. Out of the blue, a few few weeks ago I got a call from her agent and he said is your mom interested in working again and I said I sure I think so and I called her up and uh, he sent me this script it's a, a movie about, uh, with Burt Reynolds called oh, wow. Dog Years uh, directed by a uh, wonderful young director Adam Rifkin and that Adam wrote and I read it and there's a great part in there for mom and I showed it to mom and uh, Burt plays a, a, an old actor who's in his 80s and he's traveling the country going back and, and uh, sort of making amends to the people in his life that he's wronged. Oh, wow. Um, and he ends up in a nursing home and finds my mom, his first wife, at the end of the film, and there's some lovely scenes together. So, oh, wow. So first, her first time working in several years, and so she just got back from two weeks in Nashville filming with her oh, old right. friend Burt Reynolds, and there's a great picture. Do you have um, a picture of her? her uh, there's a picture of a Spencer with his mom. Why don't you put that one up? Kathleen Nolan. But they found a clip of Bert and my mom from Gunsmoke in, oh I think, God. 1957. Um, he was and, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. They both were. I mean, she still is. I mean, my mom's a, my mom's a of knockout. Course. Um, but they were lovers on this episode of Gunsmoke. And so they're using the clip, the black and white clip, because they both play actors in this movie. Oh, so wow. they're going to use the actual clip from Gunsmoke in the film. And you know, use it in sort of a flashback kind of way, and so oh, I, can't, I can't wait to see it. It's how gonna lovely! Be, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. He was my big crush growing up. Burt Reynolds. Oh, I was like nuts about him. Yeah, completely nuts about him. So, I just Dan. August, He's a nice man, really, really. I've heard that. He's a I lovely just, guy. I just read his new bu- his new book. Yeah, and uh, it was interesting him talking about Sally Field, and I always, in my mind, I always thought that was the perfect one for him. In she's about mind, to do. You know, she's gonna do. Uh, Glass Menagerie on, on Broadway, Broadway, which is yeah. going to be great. And you just worked with Brian Cranston uh, in, tell me the name of it. I don't say All it. the Way. All the Way, yeah. which was the Broadway All show. All the Way with LBJ. With LBJ, which yeah. he won the uh, Tony for. Now, how did this come about? I mean... Uh, Jay Roach, the wonderful director Jay Roach from, you know, Meet the Parents and uh, the Austin Powers movies, 
who, said, who sort of segued into directing kind of political films. He did. It's interesting because he either directs really outrageous comedies yeah. or very heavy political films yeah. that are very complicated. Well, they're 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 heavy, but they're light. I mean, Recount was a sort of a, a kind of a farcical take on. But they're the, complicated. They're I mean, complicated. I mean, politics is complicated. Yeah. But Recount and then uh, Game Change, which is the first time I'd worked with him, about the Sarah Palin John McCain thing and the Obama. You know, does he offer the roles to you? Uh, no, I read for it. I mean, Dan, uh, I, I'd actually I'd got a, I'd gotten offered the role of Jeb Bush in Recount. Oh uh, man! Well, yeah. And and I wasn't able to do it at the time. And so when Game Change came around, they asked me to do it, and that was a great experience. It was my first time working with Jay, and then uh, and then all the way last year, uh, went in and read for him. And uh, it, I say it's uh, it's like getting invited to sit at the grown ups table. Uh, you, you get to work with with Brian Cranston and Anthony Mackie and Melissa Leo and Stephen Root and sitting down at the table read it was just a it was just a uh, it brings you up first it's well scary. it brings you up but also you're you're sitting there with with uh, as a character actor as a character guy oh, sitting around the table and looking at all of these people that I've admired for years I mean Ray Wise and Stephen Root and uh, Jeff, Jeff Doucette Frank Langella who I God. just saw in the, in the father. father yeah wasn't he incredible excellent yeah so, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it does. It elevates you, and and just to be able to play in that company is, uh, is you know, is quite a gift. Now, w w Brian, uh, he's. I just have. I, I just have. He uh, he he slips into things so easily. It seems I used to know him from the improv. He used to hang around before he was on Michael in the Middle, uh, Malcolm in the Middle, and he used to hang around at the improv all the time. And he was just this cool guy that wanted. That yeah. was thinking about doing stand up, but never did it. Yeah. And, and he was sort of really, really cool. And he's one of the funniest people I've ever met. Really? Absolutely, absolutely one of the funniest people I've ever met. He was, but he was very much a ladies' man. The girl, the women really liked him. I remember. And when I see him in parts, I mean, trombone. Trum LBJ. Trumbo. Oh right, trombo. <laughs> yeah. He, he, trombone um, is the, is. Oh, uh, is you're thing. thinking of music man. I'm still in, in New York. You're still in New York. You're I, I barely slept. Trombone. But that's going to be the sequel. It's yeah, going to be Dalton Trumbo yeah, and jazz band. Yeah, but he slipped into those parts, and they, it, it seemed that there's, there's an ease to his work that seems so... It's, it's, uh, it's, it's effortless, but yet you see the effort that, that goes into it. Uh, I saw him do All the Way on Broadway, and he didn't have a lot of prosthetics. They, put, they did no. something with his ears... Um, but obviously, the voice and everything else, the characterization that he that he brought to it, was all just his own physicality. In the movie, when you see it, um, wonderful, wonderful makeup artist named Bill Corso, and uh, Bill Bill designed these nose and ears and chin, and they did sort of prosthetically to him, uh, uh, just magic. I mean, they would make never him, have known. They make him look. He becomes LBJ. And when I was there for my makeup test. I was sitting in the makeup trailer, and he walked in behind me, and I, the mirror was in front of me, and I saw uh, Lyndon Johnson walk into the makeup trailer behind me. It was just mind-blowing. Just mind-blowing what he does in this movie. It's really, it's really something special. Wow. And uh, playing Jeb Bush, that's like, man. Well, I didn't get to do it. I didn't get to do it. I, I mean, I, 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 they, I was asked to do it, and I wasn't able to. Right, but, so. just the idea but I, I could probably still, I did, could probably did, still did do it now. Did you just panic when you were thinking? When they, uh, I, I would have just panicked. Well, back then, I mean, he was just the governor of Florida. So, uh, you know, he was obviously this year, in this election cycle, he was the... He was the I guess I'm such a politico that I... I, I am, but he was, the, he was the heir apparent. I mean, he was the guy. And then Trump came in, and all these other yahoos came in, and... And it's just been a... It's, it's been just, a hoo-ha fest. It's been a clown car. That's what they call it. Yes, yeah. to say the least. Now, you're also on Aquarius yeah. with David Duchovny. And that series is coming back. It just started this week. We started last Thursday. Last they Thursday. did a, a, a big uh, rollout with a two-hour premiere, uh, commercial-free. So it was just like watching watching a, a great two-hour feature, which was really neat because last year they rolled it out. Uh, they did it on uh, NBC, put, it, put all 13 episodes on NBC. I love that. Where you can watch it. You can binge it. You can not binge it. Um, this year, they did the two-hour premiere all in one night, which is really cool. It was really fun to watch because it was it, it's so beautifully directed and so. Who directed it? Uh, Jonas Pate. Mm -hmm. Jonas Pate, who's directed several directed several of the first season episodes, and then he did a couple this year. Uh, wonderful, wonderful director and uh, John McNamara, who's uh, oh, just he's had tons of TV. Great guy to work for, and uh, he gets uh, I mean Timothy Busfield and just terrific. 
terrific. He gets directors who get actors. He gets mm -hmm. directors to Timothy come in. Timothy Buffield from 30-something. Uh, from 30-something. Everybody knew him from Married the... to my friend Melissa Gilbert. Yeah. Is he married? To yeah, they got married a couple of years ago. They I did not they, know that because yeah, Alison Ingram is a good friend of mine, and I didn't. And I did not know that she's always talking about yep. Melissa because yep. they've really been married a few years. Really and, good friends, and they moved back to Michigan. And up until a couple of months ago, Melissa Gilbert uh, was running for Congress. Exactly. Yeah, she was going to run for for a, a, an open uh, Congress seat, and uh, and she had a, a health issue that had her uh, made her pull so out. So they moved so. back here, I guess. No, no, they're they're still in Michigan. And oh. Tim works. I bump into him because. There's no work in Los Angeles anymore. It's Not all in Vancouver, all. Toronto, Atlanta. So uh, Orleans, I ran so. into Tim in my uh, in my hotel in Vancouver a couple of months ago, working on the Magicians, uh, and then saw him again in Atlanta. And he just goes from job to job, and so it's he fun. He still to acts too. You'll he see still him, acts. You'll yeah. see him, in, especially if he's on a show. If he's a showrunner, he a still acts. Producer, and he'll he. I think he's a wonderful actor. While we were. In Vancouver, uh, I saw him in the lobby of our hotel, the Sutton Place Hotel, which, if you've ever been to Vancouver, is uh, it's like a dormitory for actors. I mean, right. You walk in, you go into the bar. My friend Alexandra used to stay there all the time. You walk you? in the bar, and you see at least five, ten people that you know just mm -hmm. sitting there in the bar. And so I saw Tim, and, uh, and Ken Olin, his colleague from 30-something, was also there directing something. And uh, Tim said, I said, I can't talk to you now. He said, i got to go put myself on tape for something. I said, what are you talking about? He, said, he was self-taping himself for a, a role in a pilot. So it never ends, Jason. We just keep slogging away. You know. Do you still have to do that? I do. I just did it. I did it. Uh, I'm doing one this afternoon. <laughs> I did. I got a guy. I got a good guy. But I did it last, I did it last week uh, in Washington, D.C. I did two last week. I found a place. I went on, went on Yelp. I found a place in the Washington, D.C. area, and I found some guy. Oh, I a, could teach you to do it in a, a computer. In a house in I'm. It's not going to happen. I'm not really. A, You're so good at the I'm, tweeting. I'm terrible at the tweeting. I'm a You're terrible. Better than no. No, I'm a bad. Than I'm me. a bad tweeter. You're a good retweeter then. I'm a great retweeter. I'm a bad tweeter. Um, I no. I a buddy of mine showed me. He does it all himself. He's got a little stand and he puts his iPad up. What do you do for another actor then? I go to a guy. I go. I call oh, a guy. Oh, you find a say, guy. I say, Chad, I'm coming over in an hour. You're going to film me and Chad. I just puts, ask an actor. And he first. sends the link. He does all the thing. Um, but my friend Tim Ransom, another great character actor who you should have on your show. I would love him. Tim, I love uh, Tim. Tim gets his iPad and he does the thing and then he puts the little Chiron up with the name and all of that. He knows how to do all of that. It's so you're, you do the thing where you put the lines up by the side too, right? And I act to the paper. Oh yeah, I print. Well, I, as long as they want it so fast. I print about the, that size <laughs> on that paper. I, I reprint it out on my computer mm -hmm. and then I put it up on a C-stand. I tape it to a C-stand so I'm looking at the... I figured it out so I could put it right by the, the computer and, and do this thing, and the camera's right there, and I know how to send it and everything. Yeah. But I like working with well, my maybe friends. Well, you maybe you could teach me. Cause I come I, to my house anytime you want. Okay. It's I, not, I love doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm technologically challenged. I'll I, show you. It's really fun. Okay. I just did a girlfriend of mine yesterday when okay. I got off the plane. Ida Rodriguez, uh, a comedian, she was putting herself to play something sexy, so I'm doing the part. I said, talk like this. <laughs> and I told her, she says, oh, great. And she couldn't, she wasn't doing it. I said, I said, talk to, like, uh, talk to, um, uh, the other the other actor like you're talking to your kids and all of a sudden she's really sexy mm -hmm. isn't that funny because she's so you should coach people that oh I do all the okay. time but right, I do, I've go. never made any money <laughs> I do because I love it I love Did you get act. into acting for the money no because then we're, we're all going to go you know never, we're all never. Go broke. so tell us quick before we go to break David Duchovny who is so great with language uh. I mean, Californication, yeah. man, he's so great with language. Yeah. I'm so envious of that he just has his own thing he has his own style he has his own does he improv a lot uh, yeah, he's, I mean, he, his thing is kind of, he sort of, veer, he, he sticks to the script, but he veers off the page and yeah, makes it I love his that. own in, in, in his own sort of that, that wry way. Yeah, he's the got way, that. You know, he did it with, he did it with, Calif with, Mul with Mulder. Uh -huh. Oh, did, did he do it on that show too? He did it on X-Files. I mean, oh, but wow. that's when he was first starting out, but he definitely has his own. He's got a rat-a-tat-tat kind of jazz yeah. kind of way of doing yeah. stuff. Yeah, and he plays this guy, uh, Sam Hodiak, this cop, 1967, he's got the brush cut. You know, he's an ex-military guy. He's all he's ripped up. David's in great shape, and and he, um, he just has a way of delivering lines that is unlike any other. And he's really compelling and fun. To I watch. think so too. Good guy. Good to be around. So I I, I I've, I've enjoyed the hell out of working on that. We're going to take a break. We're right here with Garrett Spencer and an absolutely Jason Stewart. Please don't ta change that channel. Spencer Garrett. Spencer Garrett. But don't change that channel. I'm a little slow today. If everybody can see, <laughs> I'm a little like oh. oh. 
Uh, don't change. The, we don't even have a channel. There's no channel. It's the internet. We'll be back in a second. <laughs> Happens so all the time. I'm Handy from Lady Pants, and you're watching the top 10 women who are killing it in comedy. Here's number eight, Amy Schumer. She's the first Amy that comes up when you Google Amy. Whether that's because we have stalked her so many times, Google has learned she's what we want or not, we don't care. She executive produces and stars in her own sketch show, probably writes about 50% of the sketches herself, and writes and performs a shit ton of stand-up comedy at any given moment. She's self-deprecating, but also confident. She's a baller, but not inflated yet. So who cares that she uses her sexuality as a primary source of her comedy? She's killing it, and we love it. It's time for number nine. Hi, I'm Hanny from Lady Pants, and you're watching the top 10 women who are killing it in comedy. Congratulations, number nine. Kristen Wiig. If Kristen Wiig's rise to deserve stardom has taught us anything, it's how a proud parent must feel when watching their kid in the toilet for the first time. In the eight years since joining the cast of SNL, she has managed to earn two Emmy nominations, write, produce, and star in one of the highest grossing female-led comedies of all time, and star in five $150 million movies in one year. Everybody wants her and she never disappoints. She's gorgeous but awkward and has the perfect balance of bringing all of herself to every role, yet simultaneously immersing herself completely in the character. She was still playing characters named Tuck Shop Employee when she was 33, relatively dead by Hollywood standards. And at the ripe old age of 43, she is a heroine to us all. Only a few more to go. Keep watching. I can absolutely Jason Stewart with Spencer Garrett here talking about your career and everything. And uh, I, what I want to do is I want to show some pictures and you tell me what it's from. Uh-oh. It's a little thing that I've been doing of late. Mm -hmm. Are you guys ready, Jay, to show some pictures? Why don't we show the first one? I don't know anything about that. Oh, uh, that's the great Dana Bash. Um, this is your your BF. It's my BF. Yes. That's my that's my boo. I got to uh, tell you, she is so great. I mean, I I'm such a big fan of hers. I hope she's listening to the show. I'm, 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 I'm I, just the idea that so she might even listen to it is really sort of cool. <laughs> I think she's so smart and so cool, and she interviews people and she asks the tough questions. But she's she's got like a really she easy touch. She does it respectfully. Yeah. So what does that really mean? Genuinely, no. She she has she's got a re talk. I mean, she's a, a light touch, but she knows how to get the questions answered. I heard she's, you just went to go see Hamilton with her. With, with her, her. took her took her little son who is five. He's going to be five in a couple of weeks. And he and knows he knows the, he knows the score backwards and forwards, and uh, he was just over the moon. I mean, he just he loves that show, and of course he wants to be an actor now. Oh, he's no. seen Lion King, Aladdin, Finding Neverland. Hamilton now twice. He's a little spoiled. In in terms and of how his, much are those tickets? His, Come on. I don't know. I don't know. There goes his college education. No, because he'll, no he'll, one's going to pay. He'll be fine. <laughs> he'll be he'll be fine. She has a little money saved up. Um, no, he's he's an extraordinary kid, and so we we like to write plays together. So whenever I'm in Washington, we write little plays together and put them on for his mom. And he's got incredible. And you play the game. senator. I play the senator. How many senators have you played? Seven hundred and thirty-nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. working for my seven hundred and fortieth. You soon. almost running for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I should be. No, I should have a. I should have a law degree. Somebody said. Somebody tweeted something about. Uh, I was on Major Crimes the other night. I've had yeah, you were for Adam Bellinoff. He's the other night. my friend and James Duff. And uh, I love James Duff. Uh, In fact, James Duff. Um, the best. I owe, I owe the, the best guy, but I, owe, I also owe a lot to James Duff, and I couldn't wait to tell him. The first time I met him, James Duff wrote a wonderful play called Homefront. Yeah. Many years ago, and Homefront was my, oh, there it is, Major Crimes. Oh, boy, i got to lose weight. That's, <laughs> okay, good to know. That's from Major Crimes. But you're and that's so a, full. I'm so full. I'm no, but about, you have a, you, does it, no, I'm full of donuts is what I'm full <laughs> of. I'm full of, I'm full of craft service. That's, that's about... Well, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. It's, it's about 27 pounds. All right, take that down right now. There we go. Okay. 
Um, but James Duff wrote Homefront, and uh, which was a wonderful play that was done uh, off Broadway uh, with Francis Sternhagen and Carol O'Connor, and I believe Michael O'Keefe. Oh wow! Or Jelko Ivanic, I think it was Michael O'Keefe, and in the Jelko Ivanic, late seventies, early eighties. You were able to say that Jelko Ivanic. I have I've Z uh, Z E L J. This is why. You play the senators, and I play the, the dumb manager who talks like this. He's some guy running <laughs> a bar or some fuss pot manager. You need to go over there. I'll be back in five. There you go. But when I, when I was a young actor, I got a hold of this, uh, this book of monologues in a, uh, a, a theater bookshop in Washington, D.C. I was working at NPR in D.C., and I found this monologue from James Duff's home front, and that became my, my go-to monologue for auditions. At arena stage, and for those that don't know, when you're an actor and you audition for the theater, you need a monologue. Yeah, uh, a, a drama. I don't know if they do that comedy anymore, or but classical. You, you have a go, especially if you're if you're auditioning for a conservatory or Juilliard or something. You you need to have like a classical and a contemporary. So that was my contemporary monologue, um, and I tweaked it and pared it down to make it to sort of fit my voice. And I would go around to different regional theaters, and that was my. That was my go-to monologue from James Duff's home front. And so when I finally got to meet him, when I auditioned for him for the first time for a TV show that he was doing probably 10, 12 years ago, uh, I couldn't wait to get in the room and tell him that, you know, that this was the James Duff, that I, that I, you know, that I, had, been, I had been reading his words for many years. And, and as a young actor, that was what, that's what I used. That was my calling card. It's so, that said, it's so, I worked on The Closer, which is really the same sure. show. And I've had so many people uh, you know, on the show that, that were on the show, I just and I work with Kara, who is just phenomenal yeah. Yeah. to work with. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and phenomenal Tony, person. Tony Dennison, and who's who's a friend. And yeah, he's just. I just think they're all so good. Tony, I see Tony. Tony lives in Lar in Larchmont, Larchmont. Hancock Park. So I see him. I see him in at Starbucks in Larchmont all the time. Oh, you're and you're and, and, and before I got to know Tony, was also an actor that I have admired for many years. Oh God, yeah. From the Michael Mann, you know, he's done several things for Michael Mann, and uh, and and. Michael's been good to me the last the last couple of years from from Black Hat and Public Enemies and Luck and so we're sort of we're, we're tell part me of about it. Luck now you did Luck with Dustin Hoffman yeah now what was that like uh well I mean aside from the horses dying. that was so weird people don't know this I don't know if they know how to show business the reason the show sort of was canned was because the horses kept dying yeah I mean I think there was probably a lot of things <laughs> involved I mean the three horses passed away over the course of filming, which is not an un uncommon occurrence in, uh, on racetracks. The, the I don't know the statistics, but, but around the nation at racetracks, horses die on a fairly regular basis. It, this would just happen to be. So it's really a terrible job. <laughs> it's a terrible <laughs> job. Being, being, a, being a racetrack horse, being a horse race is a terrible job. Yeah. Being a, yeah. um, no, it, it, was a I mean, it was a great job. It was great, my second, my second time with Michael, um, uh, What's uh, Dustin Hoffman like? Who? Dustin Hoffman. Wonderful. Wonderful. Just fun. Wonderful. Fun and because he seems to have so much joy. In fun his and playful. He is, he and is my favorite actor. And just just loves loves the craft. I, I mean, that's what I, I love I, about that, him. I hate that word sometimes, but mm -hmm. he's just. I mean, he's all about the craft. And, and still at seventy something yeah. years old. Oh yeah. I mean, our very our first day of filming. Uh, I got a very dear old friend of mine who's a, a, a special, uh, he was an on-set photographer named Bob Willoughby. Uh, he was a photographer for Life and Look magazine, and Bob, uh, Bob shot uh, The Graduate. He shot all of Mike Nichols' films, and so there's a book called The Platinum Years of, of Bob's photography, and there's about 20 pages specifically devoted to The Graduate, and so there are pages and pages of the rehearsal process with Dustin Hoffman and Ann Bancroft. Wow. Young, you know, young, however old he was, 32 at the time. Uh, and so I brought this book to the set in the makeup trailer and I showed Dustin these pages. And Bob Willoughby was Dustin's uh, babysitter when he was a little boy. So like the lives that, you know, the, 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 the circle of life that had you know, kind of come full circle from my dear old friend Bob Willoughby who was Dustin Hoffman's babysitter to him pho photographing him in The Graduate and then me getting to work with Dustin 35 years later. So I'm showing Dustin these photographs and you could see just, and the stories just coming one right after the other about, you know, about that time with Mike Nichols who had recently passed. And, and then so, Bancroft, yeah, who was but, so way, way too young. Yes, way too young. 
you know. way too young. Uh, but I loved, I loved, I loved Dustin. I loved working with him and the great Dennis Farina, who we lost a couple mm. years ago. So uh, that was a, it was a. It was Mike a, Nichols. Did you work with Mike Nichols? I worked with Mike Nichols on uh, Charlie Wilson's War. Right with uh, Tom Hanks and yeah. Julia Roberts. Yeah. I. That's one of my big, big. That's that's great another grown-up table story. That was that was a. Did you go to the? They had a table read. Well, no. I mean, I mean, when I say the grown-ups table, you get to work with Mike Nichols. Wow. I mean, in what in. Was, yeah. In one year, I got to work with Mike, and I got to work with Michael Mann, and uh, two two masters of of what they do. And so, uh, do you find that when you work with people that are really, really, really talented, they're easy to work with? I do. Yeah. You mean actors or directors? Yeah, both. Well, you work with somebody like Tom Hanks, and it's just it's not work. You work with Dustin Hoffman, it's not work. I mean, you, you, you're working with people that come prepared. They 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 know what they're they know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they show up, and they, they expect everybody to have done the same. So it's, uh, it's, there's more joy to it than work. I um, think so. The, the director, sometimes the director can be difficult, but if you're working with actors that, that love what they do and still have the joy in the work, then, I mean, there's nothing better, you know, I as you know. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So you're on a new series. Also called Survivor's Remorse, yeah. created by LeBron James. The basketball. LeBron James is the uh, executive producer of executive it. But, uh, Michael Malley, the great uh, comedian and actor, Michael Malley, who you probably remember. wait, wait, Mike and Ma Molly? No, Michael Malley. Michael Malley. Michael who? Malley from Remember Glee. He played Chris Colfer's father on Glee. Oh yeah, he, he always wears a little baseball cap. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. created the series. Yeah, yeah. Called Survivor's Remorse. Wow, and I've not seen it. It's on Stars. It's on Stars. Uh, we just finished our third season, and. Uh, it's about a it's about a basketball player and his family. And you play the senator? <laughs> yes, I, I play I play the lawyer of 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 the family. I play sort of a fixer lawyer who's a little shady. He's sort of involved in some kind of funky things that we we're not quite sure about yet. And Mike but is he also in the series? He's 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 guested on it. He's been he's directed some. He's That's, he writes. He had writes, he done this before? Uh, has he show, has he show run a show? I'm I'm not sure. I think wow. this is I think this is his first time show running. But but LeBron LeBron James, who is a, a well known basketball player, I've heard of him. Um, big, tall guy from yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, he's the ex he's the executive producer of the show. But Mike is the Mike is the kind of the the it's driving so funny force behind when it. We, when we were kids, the idea that someone would be a hyphenate was considered bad news. Yeah. You just didn't do that. Yeah. It, it meant that you weren't able to get a job as an actor. It yeah. was like it was considered a bad thing. I just did an episode of Love, which is Judd Apatow show. Yeah, how is that? I had the best time. Yeah. And it's created by Paul Rust and Judd Apatow. Now, Paul is also the star of the show. Paul Rust? Rust. R okay. no, Rust. R-U-S-T. Not Paul Rudd. No. Okay. No. And it's this young, dorky kind of guy who's just so talented and so funny uh -huh. and so sweet. And uh, uh, it was so strange because you talk like this. Are you like no, no? I like play a shrink on the show. So okay. I'm, and Judd was so kind. I had sent him an email. I said, "There's this part. If you think I'm right for it, I'd love to come in." He said, "No, you'd be perfect. I'm going to set it up." And I, uh, I, I came in, and he said, "The guy closes his eyes a lot. It's like this. He based it on a shrink that he had. That shrink that just sits there and just." <sighs> <laughs> All right, Spencer. It's very good, and uh, your time's up. <laughs> And there was one part. And that'll be four hundred dollars. Exactly. Okay. He said something really interesting, and in and in there was this piece of dialogue because they let us improvise a lot, which I love to do. There's one thing where he says, he says, you know, the last four months your life has been really, really bad, and it's just <laughs> awful. And I'm sitting. This is you saying. The this? shrink says this to me. I'm <laughs> sitting here and I'm staring at you, and I'm thinking to myself that you're just so centered right now, and I'm just so excited for you. It was like so bizarre. You'd be good at this. Oh, I played a lot of shrinks. Uh, yeah, I would. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah good I at play that. a lot of shrinks, but I don't play uh, senators very much. But I'd like to. Now I have to ask you. So the fat picture of me mm -hmm. and the, the from Major Crimes, the picture of me is a fatty, and then the one of Dan. You look that, thinner now. Well, I'm because I'm thinner now. Put, put some other I laid off the donuts. That's, that's, so that's, I, okay, that's I was wondering if more. that was going to be it. Just because no, no, because the more. picture of me and Dan. Oh, hi. That's oh, there's she, a, she looks familiar. I think she's Taylor Swift. Um. That's funny. That was uh, that was two New Year's Eves ago. Uh, I don't understand the success of her at all. You don't understand the success Not of her? Not at all. I think she's cute. She sings okay. I only seen her on award shows, and I, I, I don't get it. 
Well, I'm going to tell her that. I'm going to tell her that, and she. <laughs> no, her she seems really nice. Her self confidence is going to just go right she down the toilet. She seems really nice. She sings well, but I don't understand. I mean, people, are, I, I don't get it. I'm so completely out of that whole, you know, idea of these young. You know, I was like a Streisand fan when I was a kid, and and Bette Midler, and these kind of quirky, kind of, you know, belters who are really, really just gifted. Yeah. Not that she's not great, but yeah. I'm just saying that they were just. I think I think powerhouse. But she does. I what I what I like about her is she does have a sense dance of, songs, I guess, right? Yeah, but she does have a sense of the history of like if you said uh, she's smart, she's wicked smart, or as she's, people in Boston say, she's wicked smart. She's wicked smart. I mean, she's uh, if you talked about Streisand with her. She would probably know how to sing about twenty Streisand songs. So she's why, probably a, but not she's as probably well. That's 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 another show for another time. Um, she probably knows. She probably has a a, a a a a catalog of Barbara Streisand songs, and she's probably a fan of Barbara Streisand. She has a, for a 25, 26 year old girl. It's hard she to does believe. have a sense of the history of of where hard she's come from. Hard to believe. Yeah. So no, tell me she's what incredible. happened with you. I was it was at a party. It was a New Year's Eve party that a buddy of mine invited me to a couple of years ago. And uh, and it was right after she and Ryan Seacrest had dropped the ball on New Year's Eve in Manhattan, and he said, "Hey, do you want to meet Taylor Swift?" And and I said, "Sure." I mean, who wouldn't, you know? And so Why I went not? over. Why not? Yeah. And she was with her little posse of people, and she saw me, and she got up, and she's and my friend Steve said, uh, "Taylor, this is Spencer Garrett," and she said, "I know you, I know you," and I said, "No, nah, you know, I don't, I don't think we've met." And she said, "No, no, no, I know you." She said, you're, uh, you're on Law & Order, right? And I said, yeah, I've been on Law & Order. And she said, you played the attorney that did the thing near the place where the guy, and the, you know, and I said, yeah. And then she said, then you were on another episode of Law & Order. You did Criminal Intent, and you played the attorney of the thing from the, and I said, yeah. And I said, why? I said, how, why do you, how do you know this? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed when. Oh, of course. You know, I mean, she's the biggest. Well, she's obviously on the planet. Doing, they, they had that whole bet on the Tonys about this whole thing that everybody was nominated for a Tony had been on Law and Order. And oh, yeah. Well, Danny uh, Burstein, six or seven episodes yes, over the course it, of seven years. Exactly. That was amazing, though. I mean, cause, and the dude does, I mean, James Corden said, dude's got range, dude's got major range. To see, because that was over the course of like 20 years. Yes, and he looked Danny's incredible. And look if you see him in. Filler in the room. Yeah. So Taylor Swift, and I said, uh, I said, that's really amazing. And she said, she, I said, how do you know this? She said, well, you know what I do. She said, I, I, go, I, I go to work, I do my thing, and then I go back to my hotel room, I order Chinese food, and I watch reruns of Law and Order. Like everyone else. With my else. cat, like everyone else, like just yeah. average American. Uh, with my cat, who's named Olivia Benson, who's, which is Mariska Hargitay's <laughs> character. <laughs> which is the best one. I what, the SVU? Yeah. Well, the, she's, I mean, she, that, that show is head and tails. Be, be, so she's better. sitting, she's telling me all this, and I'm nodding, and, and, and I'm smiling, and I just think it's really flattering and lovely. And I said, now, remind me again, what is it you do? <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me, and she said, well, I'm a sing." And I said, I know. I know, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know I know what you do. She couldn't have been lovelier. She was great. That's she was great. great. That was a We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back with Spencer Garrett here on Absolutely Jason Stewart. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a second after these words. You found it. You guys are good. Money B, and you can kiss my ass. Let me swallow my snot. <laughs> that's that's sexy. Keep up the good work, mild net. Ne- oh! <laughs> 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 Let me see how I'm gonna come and check out. No, I love you. Oh yeah, Why no cyclocyanabin. The little. <laughs> 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 Always switching up. Always switching up. What's that? It's my wedding band. Jumped out of my. Oh my god! I hope it's on an omen. Call my wife. He keeps moving away. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Schneider, and you're watching T 
Hollywood V? Z Hollywood TV. Z! <laughs> I'm not going to bang. I'm not going to bang. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. We're back with Spencer Grayer here on After Jason Stewart. We're going to look at some more pictures from his incredible career of so many things. Show us some more. It's like this is your Jay. life. Oh, House of Cards. House of Cards. A little, little thinner. A so, little thinner there. Laid off the donuts before I went to Baltimore to do that. What, what is that show like, Kevin Spacey? Um, great. I mean, Kevin's, Kevin's a, a... Tell people who you play. Uh, I played a guy named Howard Webb, who... This was season two, so I'm going back. He was a guy who was uh, uh, a Democratic congressman who was uh, vying for Kevin's whip seat in the House. Right. Um, so I think I did the first two episodes of season two. But that, I mean, so. he, he is just uh, another one who has an incredible ability with language. And, and he's, he's amazing. I met Kevin when he was 26 or 27. Uh, he was doing a production of The Seagull, the Chekhov play at the Kennedy Center in wow. Washington, D.C., Directed by Peter Sellers, you know Peter, not Peter Sellers, no, yeah, the not Briti the Pink Panther, the, the British one. The, uh, no, not, he no, no, he's an American director. He's got like crazy spiky little hair. I thought he was British. For no, something. everybody thinks he's British, but he's he's an American. So it's not just me then. No, okay, he, good because I have yeah, this he idea. does have a uh, that. Kind I of had vibe, this idea in my mind. But he directs a lot of opera and theater and mm -hmm. uh, anyway. So this he just was, talks like this. He sort of talks. Yes, he's, yeah. he's sort of elfin. I think I've auditioned um, him. And he's great. And this, so this was a production of The Seagull. With Colleen Dewhurst, uh, David Strathairn. Oh man! Sure. Uh, People don't probably even know who Colleen Dewhurst is anymore, well, which is a shame. They should. One of the most greatest uh, stage actresses and uh, did a lot of great film work. I'm yeah. trying to think of what people remember her. Well, film-wise, I mean, The Cowboys, probably most memorably, she played the Madam in The which Cowboys. John, uh, the Margaret John Arthur. Wayne, yeah. Um, but it was Colleen, David Strathairn, uh, Spacey, who was 25 or 26 at the time, uh, and Kelly McGillis. Who, who was yet oh. to open in Top Gun. Top Gun hadn't opened yet. I just saw that recently. Top Gun? Yeah, at Forever Hollywood. You go outside and you see it. And, and totally holds up. I have to say no. I have to no, say it was I mean, quite it, cheesy. Oh, oh, sure. And I remember loving it and it being so romantic and so... That's not romantic. It's for just, me, I remember... It's it, just a guy fest. It's just a... I th well, it's definitely not the kind of guy fest that you <laughs> think is. The, the whole audience was laughing its head off. The, the, there's, a, there's the homoeroticness of the... In the shower when oh, they're all not, yeah. That's just the beginning. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the volleyball. The oh, volleyball, yeah. everything. Yeah. I mean, it's just... And you, you don't even know Kelly's there. Her part is not really that big. But also, she was a rocket scientist. Yes. She played her, and the first time you see her with the hair and the makeup and the dress and everything, and, and when the, they're all gathered in the airpl airplane yeah. hangar and she, and she shows up. And she walks in with this suit that's sort of tailored. I mean, come on. It's, you know, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a Tony Scott, 1980s, glossy. I th but I had a different feeling in my, you know, my memory of it was so different. But she played Nina in The Seagull in this production that my mom was in. So I was taking the train down from New York. I was living in New York at the time, and I would take the train down and to visit Mom and, uh, and watch this production of The Seagull, which was a very, very strange, very strange production of The Seagull. I, I, won't, I won't go into it, but if you've ever seen a traditional production of The Seagull, this was as far away from you as you could get. It was like the set was a chair with some laser beams. That was Peter <laughs> Sellers. That's, okay. Um, but Kevin was this brilliant, mercurial, young actor who... Played, who played Treplev in this production of The Seagull, who, uh, you know, you watch him and you go, oh, that guy's going to be a star, you know. It and then five it. years later, you know, he's in Long Day's Journey into Night with Jack Lemmon. And well, Jack ne Lemmon really took him under his wing. Yeah. His and wing. Jason Robards, who's famously was, did a lot of, you know, work with Colleen Dewhurst in, you know. The in, in, Moon in for Misbegotten sure. on television. I remember seeing it as a kid yeah. and being completely blown away. Yeah. I started acting when I was very, very young, yeah. so I was... Who did you study with? I studied with a guy named Lawrence Park, okay. who actually played the mailman on The Real McCoys. Really? Wow. When, when, uh, when uh, on your mom's show. Okay. I forgot the name of the... Isn't that weird? And he, yeah. was, he was an actor. Yeah. And uh, he taught me... The most thing he taught me, I think, was about history and about having respect for the play or the film or who directed it or mm -hmm. who... Did things. I used to have a great memory for everything. I don't have it as much as I used to. I used to remember everything. 
but it, it really gave me a lot of respect for who wrote something, mm-hmm. who acted in it, mm-hmm. you know, who who do we stand, whose shoulders do we stand on? Mm-hmm. And uh, I just adore adored him. I studied with him for different times, fourteen till I was sixteen. Okay, and it really gave me some. Uh, I blo- studied with a man named Sanford Meisner. Who uh, the who actual Sanford Meisner? I studied with the actual oh, person wow. of Sanford Meisner. For those who, at home knowing, this guy is an iconic acting coach. Who uh, uh, was a teacher at the Neighborhood Playhouse, um, home to Joanne Woodward and uh, Diane Keaton and Robert Joanne Woodward is probably one of my all-time favorite sure. actors. In the uh, world. But mom studied with Sanford in the 50s at the Neighborhood Playhouse. And my mother I- just married people. <laughs> She did have an affair with Marty Coe from Cagley and Lacey when I was a kid. Really? While she was married to my dad. Sweep yeah. the leg. Yeah, yeah. Sweep the leg yes, from exactly. Karate Kid. Exactly. Um, yeah, Marty Cove. Yeah. He's still around. Sure he is, yeah. He's still handsome, and he dates a woman that looks exactly like my mother 20 years ago. Uh, and every time he sees me, he goes, hey, how's your mother? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not creepy. He, well, not with uh, my mom. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, All my right. mom's very... Th- Are you from... Did you grow up here? I grew up in Los Angeles. You did? Okay. Yeah, I'm an L.A. boy. Nobody... You're, you're the one, then. Well, at my age, now there's a lot of people. Yeah. Let's yeah. show some more pictures, Jay. Sh- show some more pictures. Skinny ones. Skinny and sexy. Oh, oh. here you look uh, really good. Thanks, because I'm I'm uh, Jack McGee. Jack McGee, the great was Jack on the show McGee, a couple weeks ago. and uh, Lawrence and great Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, that's 21. Uh, that's um, uh, about the kids at MIT. Uh, that's with that's Fishburne and Kevin Spacey and Kate Bosworth and uh, oh, Jim this was Sturgis. a great movie that he produced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, about yeah. the kids at MIT that were card counters. I don't in know Vegas. why people are rushing to see movies that he's in. And I hate saying it like Who? that. It was Kevin Spacey, because he's done so many movies in the last couple of years that I thought were so great. He's been doing a lot of, sort of a lot of indie stuff. He did this Ru- Elvis and Nixon Jack, thing. Jack, um, what was it called? You were in it. Casino Jack. Casino Jack. Yeah. Really good movie. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, just a really great yeah. film. And then so a, a great movie with a with a uh, a sad a sad ending. Oh yeah, but still. We I mean no, we lost our we lost our director George Hickenlooper, who was this, the wonderful director. I did directed not know Casino that. Jack. He passed away uh, a week before the film opened. Oh, man. Uh, and he was a guy who was just absolutely on the rise. I mean, this was probably the best film that he'd done, and greater things were he to is come a, for him. Kevin Spacey is an incredible proponent of supporting new filmmakers. He's got this absolutely. program where every year he does Trigger like Street. five yeah, or he ten does the short films. He does four, uh, three or four, I believe it's called Jameson First Shot, and uh, he finds these young filmmakers from all over the world and invites them to come and he gets one uh, one actor uh, this year it's Maggie Gyllenhaal I believe I did I was up for that film and I was I heard that I was very close to getting because actually last said, year was Adrian Brody and they sent I, an email yeah. yeah and it's and he's he gets he gets terrific people to do these shorts Kevin's done one Willem Dafoe I think did a series uh-huh. of them uh, and he gets these gives these filmmakers a shot at, at directing uh, a little short of, of, of their own writing and and uh, uh, no, he's really good. Gets I mean, him Jack, in the festivals and all over. Yeah, the- and Jack Lemmon had his his great phrase was about uh, if you've had success in the business, you you should have an obligation to send the elevator back down. Yes. So that's Kevin's. Uh, that's Kevin's. Uh, the logo for his company is uh, for his foundation is like the elevator going down button. Uh, he's really good about mm. about mentoring young students and young filmmakers uh, from whether it's at the the old Vic in London, which he ran for twelve years, to uh, you know, I mean, now you know, now doing workshops and doing the master class that he does. He's I haven't really watched those. I, I, have you watched any of them? I haven't. I'm kind of curious to see I the am Dustin too. Hoffman one. That's the one I yeah. want to see. Yeah. Let's show another picture, Jay. Uh, Transformers 12. Um, <laughs> no, that was Transformers 2. You're, I, you're actually in the military there. I was in the military is, there. Is it a senator? I was. It's, I the... got out of the military and then I became a lawyer and then I became a senator right. when I got out of the military. No, that was, I think I was, ah, wow. Pre- second or third job, uh, Star Trek, Next Generation. Simon Tarsus, the, the half Romulan. Um, you are so cute. Thanks. I don't know what happened, but that, there, there was, uh, that is, oh, that's the great. Uh, very, Liz, thin, great very thin. Very thin. Uh, good hair going on. Oh, yeah. Good hair situation. Um, that's a movie um, that uh, that I think a lot of us would like to forget. It's called I Know Who Killed Me, now, starring Lindsay Lohan. Lohan, and she played twins, and she played like a she played a stripper, and a good girl. This was right about when everything was pretty crazy. It was all going. What was that like? Going to heck in a handbasket. Um, it was fraught. 
I'll just say that it was fraught mm. with difficulty. It was a it was a difficult time well, for young she, Lindsay. I hope she's able someday to just. We uh, we had done or about a year earlier we had done the movie Bobby for Emilio Estevez. God, I love she was that in, movie. What did you play in that? Uh, I played his campaign manager. Oh man. Josh Josh Jackson and I, uh, and uh, Nick Cannon. You know, what I thought was really great in that was Debbie Moore and Sharon Stone. Yes. In that scene when they do the hair. In the, in the, exactly, in the beauty show. Yeah, that was a lovely scene. Now, there was a lot of, lot of great things about that film. I love the movie. Among them was Lindsay Lohan. She was wonderful in that film. Yeah. So, yeah, that was I Know Who Killed Me. Is that how uh, you got this, or was it just a coincidence? I or? got that through, uh, no, I, I did, did an Lindsay episode. Did Lindsay make a call? Or? No, <laughs> I, did, uh, I did an episode of CSI that Emilio Estevez uh, directed. Oh, wow. He was, he was, uh, directing a lot of episodic TV to prepare for directing Bobby. And, uh, and we met on that, and we became pals. And uh, he said, I'm trying to put together a cast for this movie about the day Bobby Kennedy was shot. And if there's something in there for you, uh, I, I would love you to be in it. And you sort of file that away, and you go, sure. You, know, that's, you hear that all the time. I, about six months later, I was in Turkey doing a, a, a terrible movie with Billy Zane and Gary Busey. In, on the Turkey-Syrian border, and it's a and it's that's a that's a whole other show, um, but I got a I got a Billy Zane. Oh, I love Billy great, Zane. Great, great, great guy. Great inventive actor. A lot of fun. I do not know why he wasn't a bigger star. I just adore. I him. think he does just fine. I mean, he he's, does. But I just you know, I thought that walking he, down the street with him. I'll tell you, walking down the street. Because he's Titanic. In, he is Titanic. He's iconic. But I mean, walking down the street with him in Istanbul, Turkey. And people shouting out, Titanic, Titanic. I mean, he's... But he's so handsome. Yeah, great guy. He looks yeah. the same. He looks yeah. terrific. Gary Busey was... Uh, ah, that's a ah. whole, that was a whole other situation. Did my first but I got a, with him. I got, a, uh, uh, I, got a, a, um, uh, I got a message at the hotel I was staying at in Istanbul... That Gary wanted to, to do your terror chart? No, <laughs> to call, to call uh, Emilio. Um, and I called from the hotel. And he said, when are you coming home from Turkey? And I said, I'm not due back for another week. He said, great, I'll wait for you. He said, there's a part in Bobby. And so I flew from Istanbul to London to New York to L.A., got to L.A., no sleep. The next day went to a fitting the next day. And I, I did this, I did this my first day on Bobby, if you ever see the movie. There's a scene with me standing in front of a bus talking about uh, voting regulations. I'm talking about chads, oddly enough. Right. Um, in, 19, in 1968, before a recount. Um, and I'm just off my ass with jet lag. Um, so whenever I see that movie, whenever it pops up on TV, I remember how just out of my body I was because I was so zonked on, on no sleep. So it, it, when you, work at, you look at certain things you've done, you remember what was happening that day. Yeah, someti really, yeah, yeah, sometimes you do. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. Very rarely can I look at something that I've done and not think that. But I remember that, that picture that you showed with Lindsay Lohan or from, from that film, I remember. Uh, Show us some more. Show us some more, Jay. What do we got left? Oh wow! Thank you for smoking, uh, Jason Reitman. Jason Reitman, uh, his first movie, I think. Think so. Yeah. I think his first, uh, his, his first or second feature. I think it was first. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that was a fun job. That was fun because that was with uh, Who's Aaron that? Eckhart and William H Macy, and um, that was He's a great. Such time. an incredible director. He's got a show on uh, one of the ch called Casual, yeah. I think. Um, don't know. Good, good. Uh, lots Perfect. of eye makeup. Very. Heavy, heavy eyebrows, good eyebrow work. Some, uh, doing some eyebrow acting there. Yeah. I'm going to say 21. Oh, Public Enemies. Oh, yeah. Public Enemies. That, that you were great in that. Thank you. That, cha that changed a lot. That changed a lot of stuff for me. Because I think that you, similar to me, we all get st stuck in a certain thing. But I got stuck in a box for a while. But your box is a very great box because there's a lot of things to play with in that box. Casting director uh, said to me, uh, I went in to read for that role, and the casting director brought me in to read for this sort of mook, this kind of thug, uh, criminal guy. Um, and I said, uh, can I read for FBI agent number two? Or can I read for the lawyer? Or what, you know? And she said, no. She said, I've been watching you for a long time. She said, I, I know you can do those guys in your sleep. I want to see you do something different. Who was it? Uh, Bonnie Timmerman. Oh, how yeah. lovely. Yeah. She she's said, a I tough wanna, gal. I she's a tough gal. Yeah. And she said, I want to see you do something different. And wow. she said, I want Michael to see you do something different. Michael knows that you play lawyers and doctors and senators and all these guys in suits. You can do that in your sleep. I want him to see you do something different. How often do you wear a suit? Uh, I wear a suit, uh, well, when I go to D.C., I wear a suit a lot. 
But uh, when I'm in L.A., it's it's jeans and T-shirts as little as possible. Because yeah. I wear suits 83% of the time for when I'm on TV. So Yeah. Yeah. But it's not you. Not really. It's not. No, but I like, I mean, I, I like a suit. I enjoy a suit. Uh -huh. I've got a closet full of suits from from Law and & Order and the practice and, you know, every, uh, I, 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 I do, I do like getting dressed up. So do you, as an actor, are you, would you think most of, at this point of your career, are you being called and offered roles more or do you, so, you find it's a 50-50 thing or? It's kind of a 50-50 thing. I'm, I'm one of those weird actors that likes to audition. Mm -hmm. I like to audition because it's a, it's a chance to act. Of course. So I like to get in the room and say, this is what I can do. Uh, but it's nice to see the phone ring. I prefer and go, the tape. Huh? I prefer doing Pref the tape. Going on tape because I can do whatever I want. Yeah, and I I'm, not, I'm not great with that though. I'm good in. I like being in the room. I like being in the room. I like feeding off the energy of the room, and and it's a chance to perform. It's mm -hmm. like being on a little stage. Um, but I also do like having the phone ring and saying, "Can you go to Vancouver tomorrow?" That's even better. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You know, you have to jump through the hoops. Does so. it make you nervous not knowing? Uh, if you get offered a part, what the director wants or what the vision is for that part, or do you usually call the director and, s and say, "Hey, what you know?" If it's a director that I know, if it's a director that I've worked with before, sure. Um, but if it's a big part and you don't know, if it's a big part and I don't know, and you show up on set, if you have the luxury of having a day or two of rehearsal, which usually with an episodic with a guest spot, you you really no. don't. You show up, you're there, you do the fitting, and then you're Gone. the van shows up the next day, and you're you walk onto the set and you walk, you know, you go to work. Um, if it's a director that I've worked with before, I'll call up the director, or if it's some that I, that I have a relationship with, a lot of times they'll call me up. Um, the good ones will call you up and say, hey, let's talk about this. We're not going to have a lot of rehearsal time. At least, We're, yeah. we're not going to have time to practice, so uh, let's talk about kind of what I have in mind. Let's talk about what you have in mind. Let's try to collaborate a little bit and see if we can find the guy before you show up on the day. So. Well, I'm hoping you get something that's just completely different next. I hope so, too. I hope so, too. Yeah. This has been just a joy, and I have such great respect for you. Thanks, Jason. I mean, you're like the man. I'm the straight, the straight you. Yeah, the, but you're, you're what I want to <laughs> be when I grow up. You know, you're that's very sweet. so proficient at everything. That's very sweet. Um, so next coming up, I guess, is Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius, all summer long, and um, just... Enjoying, enjoying the summer. And watching also uh, the LBG, uh, LBJ film is on all summer. It's on all summer long, on all HBO. the way on HBO. Yeah, and Brian uh, Cranston. I think I heard today that uh, uh, the television critics uh, just uh, nominated it. It's, it. It'll win. Well, a, I'm calling it right now. He's going to win the Emmy for oh, Best no. Actor. I don't, they I don't think ju They should just stick it in the mail. I mean, yeah. there's no. There's no there's I don't no. think there is anybody who's done a, a mail no. that's done a performance that was probably no, it's as extraordinary. Good as so he, you know, he, that's, that should be. Uh, uh, and every actor should get a chance to work with him uh, or with Jay Roach, oh, wow. two of the two of the nicest men in the business, um, the most generous and giving people as a director, as an actor. You know, I, I'm I'm a lucky guy. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And if people want to get a hold of you, they can go to your Facebook page. Uh, they can go to my Facebook page, or they can find me on the Twitters. Uh, but the Facebook is the yours is quite easy to get to. Facebook, it's easy to get to Spencer Garrett. There's a there's a lot of Spencer Garretts, oddly enough. But you're the first one. I'm the one that looks like me. Yes. And then uh, and then at number one Spencer Garrett, and then on Instagram Spencer Garrett number one. So uh, any one of those, if you and want. And if you can't find him and you forget, just go to JasonStewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T, or come and see me uh, this Saturday night oh. on the 25th at the. Purple Room in Palm Springs, and opening for me will be the lovely and beautiful and funny what are you doing Dana there? Eagle. I'm doing stand-up comedy. At the Purple Room? Yeah. Where's that? That's in Palm Springs. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody, take care until I see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. The darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. <laughs>